let's talk about some Daredevil Season 2. Now, I'm going to try to keep this as brief as possible and a little spoiler free as well because I'm very certain Max and I are going to be getting more in depth into individual episodes when it comes around time for us to do Season 2 commentaries. So, I want to save up some of my deeper, more detailed thoughts on the show uh, for those commentaries as opposed to kind of just blowing my load off here. <laughs> I enjoyed Season 2 quite a bit. Is it kind of a sophomore slump for the series? A little bit, but it's still very good. There's definitely a different feel to the show now as we have Charlie Cox fully suited up as Daredevil and in action as a street-level uh, superhero. A lot of the fight sequences are more elaborate, more dynamic. They're not quite so close quarters, uh, down-to-earth, rough-and-tumble uh, brawls. You still have those, but when you incorporate stuff like ninjas and, you know, a really gritty uh, uh, vigilante who relies on shooting people from great distances away, action sequences are going to be a little bit more... I guess, vibrant than they were in the first season. And I enjoyed the fight sequences in the first season and thought it really played into well as uh, Daredevil was kind of developing his persona and developing his approach to crime in Hell's Kitchen. But now that he's been on the job for a couple of months now as fully realized Daredevil with the suit and the weaponry and everything, yeah, it's going to feel a little bit more along the lines of a comic book, of a superhero movie. Everyone's still acting the hell out of this show and making these characters so believable, so you could definitely get the idea that these people exist out there in that neighborhood. And everyone feel I feel like everyone's given a lot more to do this time around. In fact, uh Daredevil almost sometimes gets sidelined in favor of uh, more of his supporting cast, such as Foggy, one of my favorite characters, really like getting a lot of focus uh, this season with the fact that he is aware of his uh, law partner and best friend's double identity and struggles very realistically with uh, the stress of knowing that secret and how it impacts not just their friendship, but also their job. And he really brings his A-game when it comes to being a lawyer. Like, he might be your typical, like, I'm your wacky comic relief sidekick, but he can bring competency and, like, legitimacy to his role as a lawyer as well. In fact, he's, <laughs> in this season, a damn better lawyer than Matt is, because Matt, throughout oh, season two, is very distracted by everything that's happening with regards to... Um, well, this isn't really a spoiler, the hand showing up in New York and everything dealing with Elektra, that he is very distracted. He's kind of split both ways, and as much as it can be frustrating to kind of see him deal with those problems all at once, you feel more for Foggy in that aspect, and that he um, is frustrated that his buddy who is supposed to have his back isn't getting his back, but also that he is genuinely like worried and concerned about this guy. And you add into the mix uh, the developing romance between Matt and uh, Karen, which is very adorable <laughs> when it first starts out and you like their chemistry a lot, but then it makes it, again, frustrating that halfway through the season when stuff starts branching off in different directions that they end up being very, very cut off from each other. But, I mean, hang around for the whole season to kind of see what the resolution to all that is and where they could possibly go with future seasons. Let's get down to brass tacks here with the additions of John Bernthal as the Punisher and Elodie Young as uh, Elektra. Because I've heard a lot of people saying, like, they're good, but that they don't match up to the powerhouse that was Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin in the starting season. I'll admit that there is a giant Wilson Fisk-sized hole in this, uh, in this current season that uh, isn't readily filled. But I feel Bernthal and Young really do pick up the slack a little bit with regards to that. Especially Bernthal and his take of the Punisher, because the Punisher has always been a character for me that I've just never found interesting. 
I get his motivations. I get like why he does what he does. I get the backstory and everything like that. That he was kind of driven to this mad crusade to avenge his family and to just punish criminals all over. I mean, it, it has very long lines, similar things with Batman going forward, except that he goes the extra mile with regards to using lethal force. But it just never was a character that really appealed to me, and regardless of who was playing him, Lundgren, Jane, Stevenson, it just wasn't a character I could vibe to. Bernthal, man, he has a lot of good scenes as Frank Castle in this show, and he, he plays gruff, he plays very dark and Eastwood-y almost, but there are moments in this where you see genuine humanity coming through in his performance that makes this character finally three-dimensional for me. He has a nice monologue in about, I want to say, is it the fourth episode, I want to say, at the end of the fourth episode. He has a very, like heartfelt monologue, but he's still like delivering it as this very quiet, terse, and uh, gruff character. But the way he goes about explaining this story to someone, and he continues on with it, it's like a good four or five minute chunk of the episode. It is heart-wrenching, man. <laughs> I, As I was telling Max when I was kind of like uh, messaging him while I was watching it, is that I legitimately Kevin Smith sobbed at that part of the show because for those of you not in the know Kevin Smith director of clerks and smodcast uh, founder and everything like that like he'll post some reaction videos at times of him watching like the flash and uh, crying at Barry saying goodbye to Barry's mom and everything like that like if I'd had a camera on me while I was watching this episode, you would have probably see me going exactly the way Kevin Smith goes with regards to The Flash. Like, this this monologue that Bernthal has as the Punisher wrecked me unbelievably. And that's something that Shane <laughs> was never able to do for me in Walking Dead. It's something that I wasn't even really looking for in a Bernthal performance. I didn't know if he could pull off, I really didn't care if he could, but the fact that he can make a character I really didn't care for much to begin with fascinating and motivating and interesting like that, kudos to you Mr. Bernthal. I can't wait to see what more they do with the Punisher if he gets his own series, hopefully he does, or if he'll just reoccur again in, um, in this show. With Elodie Young as Elektra? Oh my god, thank god she had something good, finally, after uh, Gods of Egypt. Even in Gods of Egypt, I will say, like, at least she invested in some kind of character there. So she is a... she is a good actress. And here, with... with this character, with Elektra, yeah, she makes Elektra very enjoyable to watch, too. She's very, playing this kind of devil on daredevil shoulder whispering in his ear saying, come on, man, break the rules a little bit, you know, give in to this, give in to that, you don't have to do this. It, it was fun to kind of not only see their dynamic as uh, Elektra and Daredevil fully realized, but also kind of the backstory where they met and you realize there's more to their meeting than meets the eye. And even then, they had good chemistry, like in the past and in the present, too, as they kind of fall out of trust or love, fall into trust and love again, you're very much along with the ride for them throughout that entire uh, relationship and its development. How is it that these two have far more chemistry and better intimate moments between them than the actual people who played Daredevil and Elektra in the 2003 movie who actually became husband and wife? <laughs> Anyways, but no, I really like what they do with Elektra in this. They take her character in a direction, and I will say there's a lot of stuff that happens in this season that I was very thankful for finally getting to see. You get to see Matt Murdock do a little bit more lawyering, which actually, but not only just lawyering, but lawyering in the Marvel Universe, quote unquote, in a way, and that he's actually like, you know, making everything kind of inter interconnect, even though it's already connected within the story of the show, it's just cool to kind of see like, okay, he's going to be 
defending the Punisher, essentially. Sorry, that is a bit of a spoiler, but I mean, there's way more, you know, stuff I could give away now that I'm not going to. But yeah, he ends up playing like defense attorney for the for the Punisher. So that's kind of cool because that's what Matt Murdock does in the Marvel Universe. He, he ends up being like that go-to lawyer for a lot of the superhero community at times. Who would have thought that Netflix would play host to two of the most stressful trials on film? This one in Daredevil Season 2 and the actual like footage from Making a Murderer. Like, And also to kind of tie in with what I was mentioning about Foggy, that, again, that's where Foggy like shows a lot of A-game throughout this season is basically picking up Mac, Matt's uh, slack and rising to the occasion. Everyone in this show rises to the occasion. Even in their smallest appearance, such as Rosario Dawson returning for here and there as Claire Temple, like, I just love Ros Rosario Dawson. And she spends a lot more time uh, working off of Foggy than anyone else. They, they work really well together. They have good dynamic uh, between them and as kind of these confidants of Daredevil who kind of feel like, yeah, we got the short end of the stick with this relationship, didn't we? Like, they're just kind of palling based off of that mutual friend of theirs. And there's plenty of surprises I haven't given away yet that you just have to go check out for yourself. And when you check it out for yourself, go back, rewatch him, and then please watch him with a commentary from me and Max because I'm sure he and I are going to be diving right into this season. Uh, from what I've heard from him, he's had a good time with uh, the season so far. And hopefully we'll get into those commentaries pretty soon. But yeah, I'd rec of course I'd recommend this show. It's not as... I guess it doesn't have the same oomph probably that the first season did have, but it's trying different things. It's trying newer things that the first season wasn't even attempting at that time. And so I can appreciate it for that. It does those things well. It Does it feel a little uneven at times? Maybe here or there. I, there's a bit of, I feel there is a bit of a rush in the last two or three episodes with regards to the story involving Elektra and the hand and everything like that. It does kind of feel a little kind of, okay, let's get to the finish line of this. But you know what? They do it well, at least. And they may be rushing to the finish line with certain action beats or certain sequences, but at least they look cool as hell and they're being acted very, very well. And again, I'm sh this has been revealed already, so I'm not going to spoil it. Like, stick to the end. You get a little glimpse of some Luke Cagey goodness heading your way. Hopefully that can uh, be just as successful, because even if this isn't as good as the first season, I love that it's trying some different things. I love that it's embracing a little bit more of the comic book roots of the character and making that effort to get more established into... Marvel continuity, as it were, it still looks hella good. Way better than a lot of other stuff you probably see on, you know, your regular broadcasting services. So definitely check out Daredevil Season 2, and then, hey, in a couple of weeks or a month or so, come back and Max and I will already be commenting away on it. And we'll possibly have a drinking game, too. <laughs> <laughs>